Hello friends. Today we're going to talk about stable diffusion. A lot of us go in here and hit the prompt and we want to create an image. However, you know, the models are not trained on ourselves. And if you're like me, I kind of like to put myself in different art because I think it's funny. So today we're going to show you how to do that using text one versions and the embedding inside stable fusion itself. So let's get started. So inside your um, stable diffusion folder, if you go down, you're going to see a file down here that's called um, web ui.user.bat and you usually use that file to open up stable diffusion and if I right click that and just edit a notepad these command lines that I have up here no half disable NAND check X formers disable safe unpickle precision full update check these are the command lines that I'm using to run mine um, so this is something that you may want to use for yours um, just to be transparent to show you how my arguments are set up. And if you need to understand more what these arguments are doing, if you go to the stable diffusion git page, you can actually go down here and it will tell you everything that these arguments will do. So you can read those for yourself and experiment. So if one of these arguments is causing an error on your machine, um, take it out of the command argument line. Um, and you can go in here and just kind of see what would work for you. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to train our model. And we want to train it at the base level, meaning that if I'm going to use a 1.5 model, I want to use the base 1.5. So that way when I use other 1.5 models, my embeddings are going to work properly. So if I go over here and go to Hugging Face, I have it up here, the stable diffusion. If you go over here to files and versions, you click on that, and then we go down here, and there's different versions. And I want this version 1-5 prune safe tensor. So go ahead and download that, and then um, we'll move on to the next step. I already have mine downloaded. And we want the bigger file just for we can have that better training environment. So once that file is downloaded, we go back to our stable diffusion and we go down here to models and then we go down here to stable diffusion, click on that. And then I got mine broken up in different um, folders. So I put mine in training SD15 and then I put the um, tensor right here. Now, if you put it just here, that's fine. Um, you don't have to create the folders. I just did that to keep mine kind of separate. So back here in our Stable Diffusion folder again, we'll go up here to the textual inversion template. And then right up here, I got some textual inversion templates up here. If you click on none, um, you know, that just says picture, not very, um, very good. So if I hit subject, because we're training people, We'll have it up there and we'll have like a photo of a name, rendering of a name and so forth. And what this name is, is whatever you name your embedding, that's what's going to be passed on. So we want to make sure that that's a unique name, not common, right? Because if I went out there and I put like, my name's Travis and put it down there, I'm sure there's plenty of Travises out there that it would never find me. So just make sure that when we um, create the embedding, we'll have that name up there and I'll show you how to do that here in a second uh, but just know that this name is going to be pulling from the embedding parameter that we put in here early, um, that we put in here a little bit later now what I ended up doing I ended up just creating my own so if I go down here I created my own subject text and if I click on that and then bring that up you know I have different parameters you know a photorealistic portrait and we can make this in there and then just kind of put in different text in there and just experiment with it. And this is what I'm going to try for mine. Um, you know, um, if you guys have any good lines that you think that we should be using, please put those in the comments, you know, and that way we are can learn and share from it. All right. So the next thing we want to do is just prepare our images. So I got 
a couple of images here just to show you how to do it. These are already cut out. Um, so if there's another person in there, like I had a person over here, I just use photo editing software. I got Photoshop, um, so I can just cut it out. Um, you can do the same thing in Microsoft Paint if you want, or, you know, Kavana. Um, you can do that in Kavana as well, or if you have GIMP, do it in GIMP. But any photo editing software, just cut out your pictures to make sure you're the only one that's in there. So once that that's um, once you have the pictures you want to use, what we'll end up doing is we'll jump over here to Bream, and we make sure that the width is 512 by 512 because version 1.5 um, likes to be trained off of um, 512 by 512 images. And what I'll end up doing, I'll just go over here and I'll drop my images over here. And see, I can move this 512 box just to get the perfect picture that I want. And then when I'm done with it, and I'm happy with you know where that box is going to be, I'll just go down here and I'll just save as a zip. And if I open up these files now, and I'll take a deeper dive look at them. And now they're um, going to be, actually I got to extract these. Oh, it's stacked off. Okay. I'm being a little challenged today. Okay, so now that I have this up there, I'm just going to go to extra large. It's either already in a 5x12, 5x12, and this is what Stable Diffusion likes. So I'm going to exit out of this, and then we'll go back to Stable Diffusion. All right, so now that we're in Stable Diffusion, over here, I'll hit the drop down. And if you notice, this first SD 1.5, this was the folder that was in my folder structure. Um, I'm using the training prune safe sensor. That's the one that we downloaded. Um, that's the one that I'm going to use for training. So I'm going to click on that. So I got training SD 1.5 um, version 1-5 prune safe sensor. So I just like to double check that. So we'll go over here to the train side and then we have to create the embedding. And this is where you make the um, magic happen. So remember when I told you the text file you have the name, this box is what it's pulling from. So for me, I'm just going to do MAD TC XYZ just to make sure that I'm using something unique in there. This initial text, I'm going to keep that a star and that's just going to keep that base at that name, kind of what I want to do. Now for the vectors of tokens, I really want this to look like me, so I'm going to bump that up to 12. Um, because I actually do have a lot of images that I'm actually going to train with this. And then after that, I just create embedding. And now that embedding is created and I can start training on it. So I go over here to training and hit the refresh button just to make sure that it's in there. Hit down and I'm going to click Mad TCXYZ because that's the one we just created. And we're going to go down here and we have the data set to directory. So for me, I have this images right over here, my 512. And I click on that and I actually have 385 image. So I got 512 images. I really want to look like me. So I'm just going to copy this over like right here. And then I'm going to paste that right here just to make sure that I have that path. And then once I have that path, all right, so now that we have our path in here, I'm going to down here in the prompt template. And if you didn't train yours, like, or didn't create a text file, I mean, go down here, like, you can click subject text. So since I have mine created, I can hit this refresh button here, go down, and I hit this TC subject. So that's the one I'm using. So if you don't have that or you haven't created your own, just use the subject one, you'll be fine. It'd be fine. So go down here. And we're going to keep that to 512, 512. And, you know, I know mine are 512 anyway, but just in case, I always keep that. I don't check it. I That's just me. So on the max steps, we have 385 images. So I put 385 images down. And I always multiply that by 100 just to try to get the best image down there. So when I go down here, um, I keep all this the same, and I use this Derministic, 
I think that's how you say it. But I use that right there. And then um, that's pretty much it. Um, and I just go back up here, double check. I got my double check, make sure that I got my training up here. Make sure I'm on my right embedding. Make sure I'm in the right folder. Make sure my prompt template. And then right over here, um, I have that right there, which is 384.99. So I accidentally clicked the button or something. So just make sure that's 38,500. Um, again, just 100 more. Multiply how many images you have by 100. And then go down here, their mistake. And once we're done, we just hit train embedding. And once we do that, it starts training the images like right here and every 500 it's going to show an image in this section so if you look down here we see that it's running so this looks like it's going to take about you know nine hours so it's going to be a little bit before this is done but again you know it's a lot of images and if we go down on this section it's showing all the different um, text that we're using to actually train this. So we'll just let this run and then when it's finished, you know, we'll come back take a look at it. All right, so we're up here and again, I'm talking about this is keep on going and going through the different prompts and we already have the 500 images um, that it already went through and this is the first snapshot that it took and it's not looking bad. I'm talking about it's not 100% perfect um, but hopefully this kind of gets a little bit better over time but you can already already see a little bit of the resemblance um, let me know what you think you know below for now and then again when, once this is done we're going to check out those final results all right so now that we have everything done we can go back here to text to image and we look at this and we trained it on mad TC um, XYZ and I'm just going to generate an image just to see if it comes up like looking like me and when I do that I have that and you know I can see some of the ones so I'm talking about it's not that bad um, that was on the training one so let's go back over here and if we look at the um, the prune version and we run it again and we take a look at it and then it's going to come up here in a second and then we'll see what that looks like so we'll give that um, a second to load up here and we have the realistic vision and we'll generate that and then we'll go up there and not a very flattering one so we'll generate again take a look and you know a little bit distortion but um, I guess I can kind of see it so you know as we can tell like certain models um, look different um, this one's a little bit better I guess it gave me two little nips right there um, you know one two it's kind of weird um, so generate that and then you know we'll have the other method so you know we can do this multiple times see which one's going to give us the best um, looking results um, now if I go over here and use one of these X DXL models and generate it doesn't know who I am because remember we changed it on we trained it on the 1.5 we then trained it on the SDXL so if I generate here I'm not going to get anything that really like looks like me at all and as we see it's like you know slowly processing and then say it doesn't know who I am so we definitely is going to have to go back here and use one of these more, you know, um, different ones that, you know, actually knows who we are. And then if we generate from that, it's going to show us, um, you know, what we look like. And that's pretty much it on the um, embedding. It's, you know, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And um, if we want to train the SDXL model for they can actually read who we are, it's going to be the um, similar process. So I do um, encourage you to try, you know, that out. Um, but let me know what your results are um, in the comments below. And we're kind of in it right there, I guess.